Well, the 2.0 beta is finally here. And yeah, it's good. Lag was standing, this is probably the smoothest beta I've played and I'm really impressed with the scope of this update. The content team promised a whole combat rework and they certainly have delivered. With new spells, upgrades, and quests, this is probably the most ambitious update since Gava. As it is only within the first day of the beta, only Warrior and Archer are playable at the moment, but I'd figured I'd make this video to share my first impressions on the beta, share what is great, what is good, what still needs to be improved upon. Since it is the highlight of the update, I'll share my brief opinions on the skill tree and various archetypes introduced. For Warrior, all three archetypes seem to be a lot more similar to each other than Archer's archetypes. That being said, Fallen, Battle Monk, and Paladin are still fun to play in their own respective ways. Fallen rewards aggressive play with high damage, Battle Monk is oriented around mobility, and Paladin is just about being beefy. I will say though, Fallen seems to be a little too weak considering the risk required for the playstyle, and at the moment I think it should definitely be buffed. Archer, on the other hand, has three very different archetypes. Bolt Slinger, Sharpshooter, and Trapper. Bolt Slinger is about rewarding close combat, which is a very interesting yet fun design for an Archer. Sharpshooter is just sick, I don't know what else to say, I mean, look at this, how does this not look great? Trapper is about spamming down random shit all over the place and making enemies explode, so play this one if you like Demo Man. I plan on elaborating more on these archetypes in a later video once I have more time to play as them, but as far as first impressions are concerned, I genuinely like them all. All of these new archetypes are really enjoyable, and while they may not necessarily be equal in power, they all have their own gimmicks to make it fun, and as such I have no real complaints about the balance or functions of these initial archetypes. What I do have a complaint with though, is with the penalty of resetting the ability tree. Resetting the ability tree results in wiping the entire tree in a 30 minute cooldown. While this is much preferable to the Emerald penalty Salt had talked about in the developer livestream, I still don't understand why there is any penalization for trying to change the ability tree. With how many abilities there are and how complex it is, it is entirely reasonable for players to want to try every archetype. However, this 30 minute wait time penalty seemingly punishes players for trying new things. It doesn't make sense to me why this feature exists, and as such I think it should be removed. Players should be able to reset the ability tree as often as they want without punishment. Additionally, I'm hoping the CT team adds a way you could remove individual abilities without resetting the whole tree, as that just makes it way more convenient if you make a mistake while building your classes. Beyond just this ability tree penalty, I have a couple other suggestions for what could be improved. Some of these are inherently subjective, but I figured I'd give my own two cents anyways. The first of these is for fall damage. As pretty much every class seems to be getting more mobile with this update, I think the way fall damage works should be changed as well. Primarily, I feel that fall damage should not be able to kill you. I'm totally fine with it being in the game, and if it reduces your health even all the way down to 1%, I'm okay with that. It's just frustrating dying to fall damage when lag prevents you from casting a spell, or you randomly get launched a thousand blocks in the air. Prowess nerf from 5 skill points to 4 skill points isn't a huge deal, but I feel considering a lot of builds use it, it'd be nice to clarify why this change was even implemented. The new enemy drop animation looks really nice, but has too much of a spread. I think that reducing it about halfway would be a good change that still keeps the nicer looking visuals. And these last couple ones are especially subjective, but basically, Warrior's Bash spell no longer has physical blocks in front of it, and rather cracks the ground around it to show its area of effect. I feel the old block system looked much nicer, and also more efficiently visually represented the area of effect, and would prefer that one to stay. Battle Monk's War Scream Circle has a red particle effect, which looks too similar to the color palette of the Fallen archetype. I think maybe changing it to a more earthy slash lighter tone would distinguish it a little more. The new Sinferous Bank is nice, but it has a tad too many ender chests. I think it could look a little nicer for the full release. And lastly, the rocket jump ability, which just, yes, whoever had the idea to add this just, yes, you did so good. I feel rocket jump needs to have even more knockback. Nothing crazy, but considering it's more skill based than grapple hook or escape, I feel it should be able to rival those two in terms of mobility. Oh, and please bring back the Thanos launchpad. 
for those of you who don't know, there's a pressure plate here on the live servers that launches you to the top half of Thanos. Not sure why it's gone on the beta, but it should definitely be brought back. With all the suggestions out of the way, let's go into my favorite part of the update, the new quests. Some of these quests I have a lot to say and others I have very little, so I'll just run through them one by one. Road to Peace is the first new quest in the update, and really great all around. It has unique minigames throughout, and while not exactly my thing, it still provided cool lore for the story. It had some of the funniest dialogue of any quest, and was just solid all around. Hollow Serena is another new quest that's basically a dark mystery in which you learn about Anthony Fantano's failed love life. It did run a bit long, and could have used a little less lore exposition, but it was still decent. Thanos Depository is the last new quest which essentially combined the Thanos Vault and Belly of the Beast. While Belly of the Beast was one of my favorite quests because, let's be real, who doesn't want to be vored by a dragon mommy, I felt this new quest was very satisfying and fun. The minecart section was a bit tedious my first few times running it, but after I learned it, it was pretty fun and made the quest quick and painless. The whole red light green light section was definitely a standout moment, probably my favorite one of the new quests added. A ton of already existing quests got reworked and are definitely worth talking about. The ultimate weapon is way less grindy than the original, still keeps a fun upbeat tone. Outer Eye Part 2 got a massive rework and it's a great addition. The quest is a little bit long, but has really great builds and explains some more lore of the main storyline. This quest is easily one of my favorite reworked ones. But uh, it does have Lari in it, so actually, never mind. This quest sucks. 0 out of 10. General Orders is basically the same thing that it's always been, but it replaced the final boss fight with an interactive cutscene. I'm pretty impartial to this change. Marauder's Deuce is pretty much also the same as the original, but now has some new puzzle sections. Calfusion got reworked for some reason. Its rework isn't even bad, but I just thought the original was better, and honestly I prefer the original, so this new one is just meh. Oh, and for Hunger of the Gertz Part 1 and Part 2, they glitched, so I could not complete them. I'll try to complete them once that's fixed and share my thoughts in a later video. Okay, I have a lot to say about this one. The Canary Calls is so close to being a perfect quest, but has a few issues holding it back. It's genuinely funny and captures that chaotic feeling any good quest brings. The first part of the quest is pretty standard as you walk around the new Theseid and lockpick Canary's cage. I wouldn't mind if this lockpicking section had one or two less rounds though. However, once you do get into the mines, you see both the highs and the lows of this quest. There's this pretty long minecart jump gliding section which is hilariously bizarre, but blurs the line between fair and frustrating. It's simultaneously a weird and great mechanic, but goes on for far too long with a bit too hard of a difficulty. And before any of you go saying skill issue or co-parter, just know I beat this. And I did it with all bindings. So I can enjoy difficult challenges, but this minecart section seems to fall a little too far into the fuck you section. After that, there's a stage where you mine out tracks to look for levers, and honestly, I could take or leave this section. It's just a bit tedious, but has some neat secrets. Again, this isn't a bad mechanic, but it just goes on for too long. I'd lower the number of levers you need to find from six to maybe four. But what really brings this quest together is its final boss fight in which you just avoid a deranged canary who's threatening to murder all of your friends and family. Truly another wholesome Windcraft quest. No complaints for that boss fight, it was genuinely awesome. I have a lot of feedback for this quest, not because it's a bad quest, but because it's a great one that's just held back by overly tedious mechanics. The Canyon Guides is less of a walking simulator and more of an actual quest. It's definitely an improvement and a nice break from the longer quests. The Lost is also a nice improvement that introduces actual gameplay and not just traveling from point A to point B. Recipe for Disaster and the Royal Trials were basically the same, with some slight improvements. And before anyone asks, no, I did not do the new raid yet. Why? Uh, cause I was scared, and also cause I'm waiting till healers are added back into the queue. The last thing I wanted to touch on are some of the bugs I've encountered. A big point of the beta is to find and fix bugs, so I figured I'd share all the ones I've seen. It's honestly less than I thought there'd be, but these should still be fixed before the update goes live. Cosmetic attack effects don't seem to replace some of the new abilities properly. Aerostorm takes a while to update to the player. Lifesteal and Mana Steal no longer trigger on friendly entities. Profession levels are inaccurate in the compass menu. 
There was a constant clinging sound during the Thanos depository. There were backwards facing body parts during Hollow Serene. The quest book did not update in The Hunger of Gertz Part 1. This NPC did not properly fall into the water in the Lost and just disappeared. Weapon powder specials seem not to work at the moment. So just to wrap up my overall thoughts, I really love what the content team has put forth for this update. The biggest changes I'd want to see is removing the penalty from resetting the ability tree and buffing the fallen archetype. But honestly, those being the biggest changes just speaks volumes to how damn good everything else is. I think some of the quest reworks were a bit unnecessary, We'll still need to play with the archetypes more to fully get my thoughts figured out. But overall, I'm excited for this update to go live, and we'll likely make another video once the other classes get added and I try the new raid. Thanks for watching.